All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at the enrichment process for uranium. And um, we'll focus mostly on this type, gas centrifuging, because this seems to be the most common one nowadays. Um, but I would like to take a moment to just talk about uranium mining. Now, the world's largest, most productive uranium mine is the Cigar Lake Mine in Saskatchewan. Um, that is the mine that produces the most uranium in the world, and yet here in Saskatchewan we don't have nuclear power. Um, uh, you've watched Chernobyl, you've seen the problems that nuclear power has. Um, I'm still a little bit more pro-nuclear power than I think uh, most people would be. Um, people who are Green Party environmentalists are very much against nuclear power. I'm kind of pro-nuclear power myself. Um, Australia is the country that has the most uranium of any place in the world. Um, they have like a full 30% plus of the world's uranium supply. Um, they have a couple of the biggest uranium mines there. And uh, they do not have any nuclear power plants in Australia. So, I think that's interesting. Um, I'm a pro-nuclear kind of guy. Yeah, I've seen the issues. I know most of the issues, but I still think nuclear power would be a... I think, it, I think it'd be... Well, it's not really suitable so much for the population of Saskatchewan, but the geography of Saskatchewan suits nuclear power very well. Anyways, we're going to talk about the enrichment process. Natural uranium. Natural uranium has three isotopes. It has uh, uranium-238, and uh, this is most of it. Uranium-238 is 99.274%. This is not fissile material. Can't use that stuff. Um, uranium-235, I guess I can write it this way makes up 0.72%. This is the fissile stuff. And uranium-234 kind of makes up the rest, 0.055%. All right, so this stuff is also not fissile. Now, I imagine that there are some nuclear processes that you can do with uranium-238. I'd have to look into that about what, what you can use uranium-238 for. Um, so there is some stuff that you probably can use it for. But we're really interested in uranium-235 for nuclear power and nuclear weapons. For nuclear power... You need about 3% U-235. For weapons, you need about 90% U-235. So you see you need a much higher concentration of uranium-235 um, for a weapon. Remember I talked about critical mass. Critical mass is the mass of the uranium-235. So you can see you're not you're going to need a lot more material to get a critical mass of uranium-235 at nuclear power levels. Now, the problem with uranium is uranium-238, uranium-235, and uranium-234 are all chemically very similar because they all have the same number of protons. They react to chemical reactions the same way. You can't do a chemical reaction and separate the U-238 from the U-235. But there is a mass difference between U-235 and U-238 because they have a different number of neutrons. U-238 is a little bit heavier. It's a little bit heavier than uranium-235. Um, so we're going to talk about the gas centrifuge mostly because that uses the heaviness of it. Um, I just pulled this picture out of Encyclopedia Britannica. 
the gaseous diffusion. So I'll just go over what these pictures mean. I don't know how they all operate, except for the gas centrifuge. I have an idea of how this operates. So you take your uranium and you mix it with fluorine to get UF6 gas. So this makes the uranium attached to six fluorine atoms and it's a gas. Now in this gaseous diffusion chamber, you put this gas in and it's got the 238 is the blue ones. The blue ones are the 238 and the green ones are the 235. It's got this membrane around it. And the membrane somehow only primarily lets out the U235. And you get mostly uranium-238 coming out of this stream. And you get more uranium-235 coming out of this stream. Then you can use this stream and get rid of the fluorine and just get the uranium again. All right. Now... The centrifuge one is the one that is used the most. So what you get is you get a motor down here. This thing turns fast. It turns at like 20,000 RPM. It's really fast spinning. The heavier uranium-238, so I'm just going to pull out a pen here. The heavier uranium-238 goes to the outside. Well, the lighter uranium-235 stays on the inside. Then the lighter uranium-235 gets stuck up, sucked up here, and the heavier uranium-238 goes out here. Now, it's not this simple. One centrifuge One centrifuge might start with A, so right here, the UF6 gas might be 99% uranium-238 and 1% uranium-235. That's what's going in. What comes out... The enriched stream this is this good enriched stream that enriched stream might be 98.7% U238 and now 1.3% U235 or even less So what generally has to happen with these gas centrifuges is A, they need to spin really fast, so they're very complex, very precise machines. And then because you only get a slightly enriched stream out of here, this stream has to go into another centrifuge and get enriched even more. And you sometimes have to have a hundred of these centrifuges going just to get it to your 3%. Or you might have to have thousands of these. All right, so these centrifuges are often used to enrich gas. So you get this UF uranium fluoride gas coming in, uranium hexafluoride, and it's mostly uranium-238 and a little bit uranium-235, then the enriched stream comes out, well, still mostly uranium-238 and a little bit more uranium-235. Now you can see, because of this, if you want to get to nuclear weapon grade, like 90% uranium-235, you might have to have thousands of these centrifuges going from one to the next to the next. And because they're very precise machines that spin very fast, they're very easy to break. Um, so that is what natural uranium is. Those are three ways to enrich uranium. I don't even know how this ray works. Um, the laser does something. 
shoots. I don't know how it works, but this is the one that I think you should kind of understand. And it works on the fact that uranium-238 is heavier than uranium-235. So when it spins, uranium-238 goes to the outside. Uranium-238 stays to the inside. But it only ends up enriching it just a little bit each step. So you have to send it through multiple centrifuges before you get a useful amount of uranium at the other end. All right, so that is the enrichment process.